All right, so video number four now with wall to walls fishing. Hope everyone's doing great. Sorry, a little thirsty. So I mentioned uh, I did an Instagram post. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, uh, I'll leave that link in my description. But uh, I was going to do a bit of a walkthrough, touch on uh, these three baits that I actually took a picture of. And then uh, do some unboxing. I got a few new things. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, Ben Kohler, and uh, he's just the owner, but the hookup tackle. I get a large majority of my things from there. Uh, just a great place. Uh, actually, had to interact with him uh, before. Just as, like honestly, just a customer service thing, and like always awesome when where you buy things goes above and beyond just to help you so anyway small plug for them just because they were treating me really well and that makes me want to continue to be a patron uh, for them so yeah that's where I get a lot of my stuff and a, a main reason for that is they have a lot of things that I want um, so that's that's really the main reason uh, and it's just awesome that they also have customer service on top of that anyway so we'll just dive right in here so the reason that I got new things one because I'm always restocking Two is with seasons changing uh, in Middle Tennessee, we've really gotten lots and lots of rain. Um, weather's been changing a lot. The fishing's been tough and really switching a lot. So I wanted to get some things that I felt like were addressing something that I saw happening. So we'll start first here. Um, we have lots of thread fin shad around getting eaten. So. One of the first baits that I decided I was going to pick up, and I have one of these in the non-LBO version. This is the Flap Slap LBO. Um, obviously, this is a Mega Bass product, and I really like this color. This is the color GP Blue Mint Shad. Uh, sick name, but uh, even more so the bait. Just, you know, that blue back top, like a lot of baits, uh, have that are just really fishy and do a really good job but has some pearl in there rolling on over and it's got that pearl orange on the bottom with some pink even like hints of like orange and red back there but it's also if you can see my finger behind it this bait's pretty transparent so in the water it's not going to be super overpowering but this black top with this solid on the bottom is still going to give that a good profile and the reason that I got this flap slap was that it's a suspending bait. So um, you can reel this through like you do the traditional ones, and it has a really, really good roll, lots of flash, does a really good job uh, getting bites. But then this one, I'm going to experiment, you know, how to fish this one if I can twitch it and kind of mess with it sort of like a jerk bait that's in a different profile. Uh, I'm going to some new water this weekend. That was the other reason that I really want to pick some things up was you know going to new water i want to throw something that i think is different than what most people are throwing and plus i want to learn a new bait and see if i can get some confidence in it so yeah flap slap lbo next one i had already actually fished this i just happened to have the box on hand luckily uh but i got this one like two weeks ago and this is the mega bass vibration x ultra so they have like a regular vibration the Ultra, they did a different weighting system in it, and it explains that on there. And this is a pretty cool color. This is called uh, HT Kan Kanhira or Kanahira, however you might say that. But I saw this and immediately was like, oh, I want that. I want to see that color and what it can do. Just really, really bait fishy. It has some flash and whatnot to it, but also just a really you know broken up color. It's got gold on it, greens on the top, purple on the back which makes me think of like that Wagasaki type color but then translucent as well has rattles in it and the rattling versions are a half ounce and so this has a really really you know it gets down really well and what I was reading about it was that this was a really good bait for like slow rolling that it could in places where throwing lots of spinner baits and things like this could really shine and that's exactly how I caught my first fish on it was slow rolling it and I mean it gets down there a little ways so uh but just a really really good looking bait so I'll probably be getting more of these we'll see how it goes this weekend because we have a lot of bait that's this size uh getting eaten right now so if it continues to produce I'll probably have to add some more of these to the arsenal 
third one was no mystery. This is winter. Everyone knows the Vision 110 does great. Fish go a little deeper in the winter, so I got a Vision 10 plus one. This one is in a very, what I've heard is really good color for these baits, is the GP Pro Blue. So I have a number of the Vision 110s in assorted colors, but there's the regular 110. And I can say that they catch fish. I mean, I've caught black crappie on them, I've caught small mouth, I've caught large mouth. Um, they are just fish catchers. But I wanted to try this one again, that really translucent, but they still has a good profile on it. And still has some good flash. But in high pressure waters, fish that maybe have been hit on a pretty good bit, uh, I'm hoping that it's gonna set itself apart and be able to get down to maybe that level that they haven't quite seen that. Um, but this is no secret. A lot of people throw these. I just wanted to pick one up because I needed to add this plus one to my arsenal because I, I don't fish them. Um, I haven't, haven't fished a plus one yet. So we'll see. The other one's produced great for me and we will just have to use this one and see what we can do with it. So um, we'll kind of go on to these first. So this, the reason that I got these was I said I'm going to some new water this weekend. These are search baits for me. Now these are too, but a different kind of search bait. But if I'm really wanting to just cover some water and I'm not sure at all what's going on, so small swim baits I think are really hard to beat. Now there's a number of ways to rig them, which is great. And there's also different presentations here. So the Spark Shad and the Hazidong Shad, they swim really different. They have really different profiles. The main way that I'll throw these Hazidongs, the small ones, the three inch, in the green pumpkin and in this ghost shad, which they both just look really, really good. I mean, these look just like the small, tiny minnows that are getting eaten right now, is I'll put those on like a really, really small swim bait head or a very small, like, owner, um, it's their underspin. It's like a one aught underspin. It's really small and I've had some really good success with it. So whenever I'm like struggling or I'm just really unsure, like all different size fish eat that. I have caught some good size fish throwing a small underspin whenever I just really didn't know what was going on. So it's a confidence thing for me. And if you've never tried it when you're going to new lakes or you're in places that are really high pressure, a very small underspin with a real small bait like that, just does a really good job. Um, it's just, I guess it's maybe really unthreatening and just really easy for a bass to come up and get. Um, the Spark Shads, and I, I got a smaller or a larger version of those two. Larger underspin or, you know, different style head, be that the Mega Bass, their, their balance head, they work really, really well. The main reason that I got these two sizes was the presentation is much different between the shape so with the spark shads, I'll say the the small ones they still don't do real well in the underspin because they have that belly. But drop shotting these baits is pretty awesome, and like a small round head um, jig head, you can really get on the bottom very well with them. They have some great great presentation to it. Obviously, there's a few missing out of here. I have fished out of this one, but I got some four inch as well. These are the ones that I normally put on those balance heads, those mega bass balance heads. Um, be that three eighths or half ounce. Great kick in the water, and like the shape of the Mega Bass Spark Shad, even different than their their Hazy Dongs, it has a head movement as well as a tail movement, and it just gives a really different like kick in the water. And uh, with the water I'm going to this weekend, uh, there's the chance anyway at some pretty larger, we'll say larger than average smallmouth. So that's really a goal I have, especially when I, I was like, oh, I need to make sure I get these um, before the weekend gets here. So we'll see what they do, but these are confidence baits. If you need a search bait and you're in new water or you're in the water that you normally fish and you're sort of struggling and just not sure what to throw, you can really cover a lot of water and you can cover it different ways. You can slow roll them, you can underspin them, you can even stop them on the bottom and just kind of hop them around. It's just a really versatile bait that will get you bit and give you some confidence wherever you're at and help you key in. You know, if you start catching them on points or wherever, you can key in and know where the fish are at least. So yeah. So moving on, we'll go to the big baits. So this is a River to Sea S waiver in the 200 size and this is in Hitch. Now I'll 
tell you, I've already had this one out and that's because I went ahead and switched out some hardware and I'll tell you about that in a second. But the S waiver as a whole, now I have a lot of 168s, well I'll say a lot, I've got three 168s, it's not like I go through them or anything. Um, and then I have a, a 200 and I have the 200 in the light trout color. So I wanted to add this because it's a much more natural, like muted color. And because of that, you know, it's, if they're not hitting the larger, more bold bait or the, not larger, but the, the brighter, more bold bait in the water, this is a really purple hue and I've caught small mouth on them. I've caught large mouth on them. I've caught a muskie on a 168. Um, that's in one of my other videos. You should check that out. It was pretty cool. Caught a very large muskie from the bank on the 168 um, in light trout. But um, I really wanted to add this one. It just looks great. And these are not the prettiest glide baits, but they have, there's something about the glide that they do have that just gets bit. And I said that I switched the hardware out, so these are now a Zowire owner hooks. I forget which ST number they are. I think they're ST45ZN. Um, and then I put a second uh, uh, Hyperwire uh, split ring on there just to give some extra travel to those hooks. And uh, one thing with these, I really like it. It gives it that extra bit towards the tail. So if something comes up and nips at the tail, they'll get a hook. But I will say a lot of my bites with glide baits are not subtle. Um, I've got a lot of fish that are hooked on both sides of their mouth, like they're coming up and T-boning this from underneath. And that's normally what I see is they come up and really, they flank the bait hard from either an angle on the side or from directly underneath. And they really, there's like a no hesitation type thing with them. Um, followers, if I get followers, it's usually harder to get them to bite. The ones that I get, that I are, say is more regular is a really committed fish that's hot and it comes out and fires on it right then. But obviously you can get followers to commit as well. You just have to maybe change cadence or change presentation. There is a, my other video, one of my first videos, I was throwing a 185 eye slide all the way down a bank and I pulled some fish, I moved some fish and it was in silver salmon and I came back with a 168 in the hitch color and caught the fish. That's actually in the second video that I put out. Um, but that is exactly what happened. So don't be afraid to almost like, you know, remember where those fish were at. Because I've kite fish, so I don't mark them or anything. But I remember where they're at, and I go back with a different presentation. Just because you don't catch them the first time doesn't mean you're done. So, yeah. Um, last one was this Mega Bass Ice Slide 185. Now, I've already got one. I told you that. In the silver salmon color, gorgeous color, but this is in Amago. Um, I've just always wanted this color. It was, I don't think it's like one of their flagship colors, I don't think, but every time I've ever seen it in a post, I'm like, dang, that looks good. It's like that Japanese trout, I think, is what it's made after, and it just looks really good. Looks really fishy to me as well because it's really broken up. Got some pink in it, pink dots, you know, those black splotches or like, you know, beige spot splotches. It's a little bit translucent. You probably can't see it's not that translucent, but that means it's going to be a little bit more muted once it gets in the water, which could be good in clear water situations. But that pearl bottom and then that really dark top, so it's still going to have a good profile in the water. And um, yeah, I mean, these swim so much different than those in every size. The Mega Bass line swims so different. So having different glide baits is really helpful because they definitely operate differently. Um, I'll get into that in other videos, but don't only get one because you, like I said, I went down the bank with these, came back and caught it in a different size of those. So it's, it's not as uh, simple as just throwing glide baits. Um, a lot, hear a lot of people talk about them being kind of like jerk baits, different cadences, but you know, it's, like, it's a fishing bait too. So different colors, different sizes, different shapes. Sometimes they have to be really specific. But yeah, I'm gonna go 185 I slide, and I did upgrade those hyperwire hooks or hyperwire split rings, Zowire hooks. Definitely want to upgrade your hardware on those and make sure you have the best hardware available to you. Um, on that, uh, this one, the label's off, but sometimes I do upgrade. These are the 3X strong um, owners. I don't think it's telling me what size they are, whatever they are, but they're the heavier ones. They're 3X, so 
Sometimes if I need one of these to go down a little faster, I'll switch out the hook just to a heavier wire hook, but still a good one. And then I told you I've got the, now there's a sorter, there's actually some Zo wires in here as well as some number two ST36s, which are these, but for the sake of not taking up too much space, I put some in there. But that's a lot of times what I'll put on these baits. It's a smaller hook and it's very light, but if you're working the bait slow and the water's really clear, sometimes I think, I think it's a, a Mike Gilbert had talked about, um, you know, going down in size and hook to upsize your bite. Like you gotta get bit first. And if for some reason, maybe they're really particular and they're picking up on something, um, sometimes going down in size can, can help. Um, same with the jerk baits. So Mega Bass jerk baits and all my jerk baits, I do change out hooks pretty regularly. I do like the Mega Bass hooks, but they are light. They are, they're soft. And if, I, if I'm having a problem, I have had a couple fish, smallmouth break the actual hooks. But if I ever have that issue or something like that, sometimes I'll go up to these ST36 and these are in number eight. They're small and you can get them in a size up from this, but it doesn't affect the action of the bait. It still spins perfectly and it still has really, really good action in the water. It still slices the way it's supposed to. And these are sharp. Um, I love the ST36 in all the sizes. I put them on cranks, I put them on all sorts of things. They're sharp, they're very hard and rigid. And being that I fish from the kayak a lot, a lot of times my drag is locked down pretty hard because, you know, rod bends, line stretches a little bit, even though I use braided leader most of the time. Um, and my kayak moves a lot of times, especially if it's a good fish. So to keep pressure on a fish, I'll put, I'll put a little bit more into my drag than I might if I was on a big stable boat because, or from the bank, because I'm giving some to the fish. So I want to take some of that leverage away from the fish. So don't overlook that, uh, experiment with those things, but make sure you're not throwing off the weight of the bait. Balance, especially with mega bass, like they're really kind of like, I'd say like they're like particular things like jerk baits and glide baits. Balance and weight does matter. So you might need to experiment some before you just go throw in stuff on there and not testing it and then going to the water and wondering what's going on. So, yeah. And I did get a bait wrap. I'm not gonna go through all of them. I kind of told you that I have some more in there. We'll go through that in another video, but Swimbait Underground makes those bait wraps pretty handy if you need to consolidate. That fits under the chair in my Hobie Outback, which is perfect for me for cutting down in weight and not having to carry a really big hard plastic um, thing to carry these. And it keeps these from dinging up against each other. It, they're gonna get messed up anyway, but when they look that good, like it kind of sucks if you immediately scratch it or run another hook against it. So it's nice to be able to protect them. Um, last thing I'll just kind of hit on real quick. I'm not going to go over this in any real depth is rod and reel selection that I'm running while I'm searching water. That's really why I'm going to do this. Since I'm going through water tomorrow that I'm not familiar with, my setups are going to be something where I can search with. So the first one, this is a, a helium three by Kistler, a medium heavy, and I've got that paired with a Cronark MGL and it's the XG, so it's the eight to one. And like I said, this is a braid to leader. Uh, so set up still like I'm from the kayak, I'm actually going with a buddy on his boat, but um, still the same kind of deal there where like, I, I like braid to leader. Um, I picked that up from Tactical Bassing and, <laughs> Bassing, Tactical Bassin and, but yeah, medium heavy, uh, really, really like that rod. Next is another Kistler, and this is the KLX, and this is their Crank Rip Twitch Rod, and this is a 7.3, and it's a moderate fast. This is kind of a cranking rod, but I don't use it for cranking. I, I can, and I have, but this is actually the rod and setup. This is a Luz Pro G 6.3 to 1. Um, this is the rod that I throw my 168s. Uh, S waivers and even the 135B uh, I slide. I've thrown a 185 on it. It's a little bit heavy, but it'll do it because um, once it's in the water, it doesn't really matter. But this rod loads really, really well. And I can't show you that right now, but it has some really good parabolic bend to it. So if I'm cranking, I also throw this for jerk baits, which is crazy. I'm throw for jerk baits and for glides. Um, but this is one of the most do everything rods that I have. 
I've thrown jigs on it. I've caught big smallmouth on it. I've caught big largemouth. Um, I can just throw a whole lot of different things on it. So again, coming from the kayak background, I, I have four setups that I try to run and I try not to have anything else. So only having four, they really have to be able to do a lot. And this rod really does great. Um, and it's real, I love, you can throw some super light stuff on the Pro G, has a lot of adjustment and stuff with it, but um, just a great overall setup. And so I do carry a spinning setup, uh, pretty crucial. I like this for some of the really small underspin stuff, you know, really small hard baits, things like that. Um, I like these for dark sleepers. I love the Mega Bass dark sleepers. Um, shaky head is one of my favorite things to throw. And this is a Stratic 2500 CI4 Plus. Uh, and this is on a G Loomis, uh, just an E6X. This is not like one of the super high end ones, but it's light, has a great balance to it has some good tip but it's got some good backbone and you can really throw some really light stuff on it and I have just caught so many fish uh, throwing those really finesse you know applications you know when, when you're throwing a really small underspin and one of those hazy dongs um, and you're catching big ones that small hook it penetrates well but this rod really keeps them loaded and they don't unload on it with a spinning setup because they have so much bend and parabolic flex to those rods so a really crucial thing I think for any kayak angler or any other angler to have is a good spinning setup that they have some confidence in um, for those situations that really call for it. Last but not least, um, I will throw the 200 on this as well as HUDs and the giant uh, 262. Um, as I assume some larger baits, I've got some 8 inch uh, huds, the 8 inch trash fish. Um, some of my really big stuff goes on here. So this is, I, I mean, this is my favorite rod just because it's, it's awesome. This setup is just super. Okay, so my camera randomly shut off. So I just got done talking about this uh, setup here for the big stuff. So make sure that you, you have something if you're going to throw those big baits that you can have the kind of confidence that you need when you're throwing one expensive baits but two whenever you're really searching for that giant when that fish of a lifetime pops up you don't want to be undergunned and then you know lose it I, that would probably to me probably be worse than having seen it to begin with um so yeah that's the final setup that i run whenever i'm going to do water plus i like i said i only run four on my kayak anyway and for four rods i can do in my mind the way i fish i can do everything that i want to do so that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I did want to hit on one thing. So obviously you can see my big Bass Dreams hat there. So a big shout out to, you know, Oliver and I at Big Bass Dreams. And then um, if you know who, where I got this idea and everything from was Tim Little and Matt Allen over at Tactical Bassin. I wouldn't have discovered the S waiver without them. And I wouldn't have caught a ton of fish, uh, including like, you know, like the biggest muskie I'd ever caught and um, things like that. So like the S waivers are legit, but both of those uh, YouTube personalities, YouTube channels, they are great. Take advantage of the resources that are out there. I don't come from a, a fishing family or anything. I just got really into it as a, as a young person and I had some friends around me that did it. And then um, when I really wanted to just go ahead and commit, I started watching both of those channels and it taught me a, a large portion of what I've done and then I just kind of took the things that were better t suited to like my style and the things that I enjoyed and, and used those so both of those places are just awesome you know watch Tactical Bass and they teach you something they're doing like three videos a week uh, Big Bass Dreams is always doing uh, live shows with like basically like fishing celebrities and other people who are just like hammers on the water so you're always learning something and it's like have it's like sitting through lecture so i mean like you can pick up so much that way uh, i would encourage everyone to do that you know that's what i'm really hoping to be able to give to people is something that will help them the same way they helped me because it is so much fun to get out there and do this especially if you have a passion for it and when you can shrink some of those learning curves and take away some of the 
the pains from it. You're gonna have them, but when you can make it less and make it more streamlined, um, that's awesome. So, Big Bass Dreams, I'll show you this cool shirt I got from there. They do have some really sick merch. So the hats are legit, but I got a new shirt. That's the, it was like an old school one he did, but it's got like the bait and line and a weight. So it's like big baits, thick lines equal heavy weights. Just a sick shirt. Uh, I'm actually wearing the big Mega Bass Dreams uh, shirt, so can't show you that one, but um, I'm gonna wear that one tomorrow. Hopefully it'll bring me some good luck. But yeah, I'll hopefully bring, uh, get some good video tomorrow. We're, we're going searching for them. Hopefully I can land a PBE uh, smallmouth, that's kind of what I'm after, but we'll see. Guys, leave uh, comments, let me know what you like, let me know if it was helpful, give me some guidance towards what uh, videos would be good in the future. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you don't follow me on Instagram already, it's seawalls86 is my name, but it's still wall to walls fishing. Follow me on there, I'm pretty active on the Instagram, I'm trying to you know get this better honed on the YouTube, but we're getting there. But thank you for everything. Thank you for those who've already subscribed and who are watching and giving me feedback. And we will see you guys later. Have a great night.